All right, guys, this is Ross. I have another really amazing fig that I want to review for you guys today. Um, it's called Blue Celeste. So we know of Celeste, as many of you guys do. Um, it's a, you know, a, a teardrop-shaped fig that has really high marks for flavor, um, also high marks for humidity resistance, split resistance, rain resistance. Um, it's just a fantastic fig that has been um, grown in many different areas of the country, um, even in Europe. And also it is a fig that has been included in breeding programs by Louisiana State University. So um, I have loved this fig being in a humid climate as I am. It's a fig that I use to compare all other fig varieties too. So I use uh, Hardy Chicago, Violette de Bordeaux, and Celeste to compare all the other varieties I experiment with to those. Those are the standards. Um, and Louisiana State University, you know, they weren't, they were no dummies, right? They used Celeste in the parentage of their breeding program for a reason. Um, it is a magnificent, magnificent fig. So for me, all the LSU figs, for the most part, I mean, there's a lot of them there still at the plots at LSU. But a lot of them have been introduced into the community. Um, so it's going to be difficult at least to find one that has been bred at this point that's relatively new to people. Um, however, um, there is a very strong possibility, at least I thought years ago, excuse the bump on my microphone there, I thought years ago, because Celeste is so magnificent, such an amazing variety, that I want to go and find some Celeste heirlooms that are old, well adapted, that perform well, that might have slightly different characteristics about them. And in that process, I found out that there are quite a few, actually, that a lot of us don't really have access to, right? When you think about Celeste, you think about Celeste and then you think about your, like, an improved Celeste, right? And those are really the only two. Maybe you think about O'Rourke. Um, but I've sort of been finding out over the last few years that there are other varieties of Celeste called Black Celeste. One's black, uh, has black skin. And the other one is called Blue Celeste, which actually has blue skin. And you know it's ripe when it actually has blue skin. So I have, uh, I picked one here and it, it'll get very blue. This isn't just like some, you know, misnomer thing. This will get a very distinct shade of blue. Um, and in the process of finding all these different types of Celeste, I actually have found a number of blue Celeste. So this one here, even though I believe it to be a blue Celeste fig, it goes by a different name. This one's called Violette de Marseille which actually comes from France originally um, in Thierry's collection. So in his collection in France, they actually actually have a fig labeled Blue Celeste. So it's not just found all throughout the United States, it's found all throughout Europe as well. I've also found over the years now, there's a couple others that I can name off here. There's uh, from Bill's Figs in New Jersey. He sells a, figs call, a fig called uh, Texas Blue Giant, which is a, not giant at all it's actually a blue celeste um, there's also a fig that uh, yatama had found called seven lakes unknown i believe he calls it um, there's also a fig that, called stallion that i'm growing here that was found at one of the army bases somewhere in the south i think it was fort knox or something like that i don't don't quote me on that <laughs> but the point is is that there's even more there's a let's see there's uh, Bill, I think in Missouri, has found a couple. One he calls Sturches. The other one he calls um, the One. He calls it the One Fig. So there's a number of these out here. And uh, you can even go to the USDA that has spread around the UC USDA version of Blue Celeste that's been in their repository for a long time. Um, so it's not like this is a totally new fig that was just invented. This is a fig that has been in 
basically the USDA's repository for a long time um, and also has been basically adapting itself over many years and probably has slight variations. I don't believe that all these Blue Celeste strains, all these different names I just mentioned, are created equal. There's definitely some differences here in quality. Particularly, I've noticed um, Blue Celeste is a, a famous fig, just like Celeste itself, for dropping figs at a young age. So if you have a younger Celeste tree, you may notice that, is that some of them don't form correctly, some of them may drop. That's just the classic thing that you'll notice with Blue Celeste. This one here is only two years old now. Violette de Marseille, it hasn't dropped a single fig. So I think that's pretty interesting, personally. Um, I think that's worth maybe getting some extra points for this particular uh, variety. Um, what else can I really mention about it? So also there's a fig out there called LSU Tiger. And as I mentioned, LSU is using Celeste in their breeding program. So in Celeste or in LSU Tiger's parentage should be Celeste. But I would argue that LSU Tiger is basically just a larger, a much larger version of Blue Celeste. It's actually double the size. So you have here a fig that I'm gonna show you guys, which is about 20 to 25 grams. Double the size of that is LSU Tiger. And I can show you guys my LSU Tiger trees. Um, it's a variety that I highly value as well, and I've been talking about that for years. But basically, I'm not entirely sure, because they're so darn similar, which Blue Celeste strain or which of the LSU Tigers I really like, right? It's possible that I may not even like Blue Celeste in the future because LSU Tiger just performs so darn well. I do find, however, that this Blue Celeste really does taste uh, significantly better than any LSU Tiger I've had. Uh, but it's probably only a half a point higher. So this particular fig I'm gonna show you guys is like a 4.5 out of five, whereas LSU Tiger is more like a, a four out of five. So it's not the biggest difference. It is obviously double the size. They do have, I believe, similar rain resistance, similar productivity, similar split resistance. This Blue Celeste seems to have a, a shorter hang time, maybe a better ability to dry. I think it definitely has a better ability to dry on the tree, usually because they're just smaller they'll just perform better here in a humid place. Um, so, you know, the jury's still out, I guess, on that. But I could literally, I have a photo. I've compared them this year side by side. They look visually very similar. Even the exterior of the fig, the cracks in the fig, the interior flavor of the fig. Um, and what I get out of LSU Tiger is that it is a, really a fruity berry fig. So it has notes, I find, of Concord grape. Um, it's got some good honey, it has some good density to it. Usually it's, uh, it's more of a juicy fig with um, a little bit less dense uh, pulp to it. So, you know, maybe not the best fig ever, but I do find that of all the figs I grow, this one right here actually has some of the best Concord grape flavor in it. Um, and other ones I've, I've mentioned in the past are like uh, Capole Curt Negra, Sucret. We just had a Moro de Caneva that had some really good Concord grape notes in it. Uh, maybe even Violette de Bordeaux to an, ex to an extent. Um, the hardy Chicago types do, or at least some of the hardy Chicago types like my uh, Azores Dark does. So I actually find this one be the closest thing to Concord grapes in a fig, which is pretty cool. Um, so for me, I'm a big fan uh, for so many reasons. Again, it's Celeste. It's got all the great characteristics that you would expect in a Celeste. It's not dropping. Um, it also tastes wonderful. So let's, let's kind of cut this open now. I think we've talked enough about the strains of Celeste and kind of what I'm getting at here. 
By the way, it's a really beautiful, beautiful fig. If I can get the camera. You'll notice that it is just like legitimately blue. Um, and that's when you know it's ready, is that it will turn a shade blue. And uh, as it continues to ripen, it will continue to be blue. It'll get darker, a darker blue. Um, it'll get more cracks in it. It'll dry up on the tree. Um, it's an amazing, amazing fig. And the same thing with LSU Tiger that people don't seem to necessarily realize for whatever reason. There's not a whole lot of hype around that fig. Um, and here is the inside, guys. Let's see if we can get this to focus. Come on there, camera. Probably should put it on autofocus. Let's do that. Or, I mean, uh, manual focus. There we have it. And actually, I don't even like <laughs> the manual focus, isn't, or the, auto, the manual isn't uh, really doing it justice, I guess. But here we go, guys. Yeah, I can't get any closer with that. Anyway, really amazing looking interior to it. Dark red jammy let's try it now yeah it's quite figgy has some grape notes in it a little bit of strawberry and of course that conquered grape Very similar to Celeste, um, but in my opinion, it should be a, it's a it's a fruitier Celeste. Um, definitely very different than Improved Celeste in terms of the flavor profile, but the interior, it's like eating a Celeste. It's very similar um, in terms of the eating experience, the skin, the pulp, like mouthfeel, the texture of a Celeste, very similar. The only real difference I can detect is the flavor profile, which of course, again, is more fruity, conquered grape, grape, strawberry flavors to it. Almost no acidity, uh, quite sweet. And uh, as they start to dry up, that, that berry flavor will intensify further. The figgy flavors will intensify flav uh, further. It's definitely a figgier variety as well. And uh, for me, I think, it's, I think it's a winner. I mean, I can't really complain about it. Um, really happy to have this. And I think more people should grow different strains of Heirloom Celeste. If you guys have an Heirloom Celeste tree that is quite old, or you think it's a little bit different than most Celeste that you find or have seen, um, I'd love to see photos of it. Send me some photos on Instagram or Facebook or even to my email. I'd love to see what the fruit looks like, the leaves look like, how old your tree is, maybe where it came from, etc. I've sort of made it my mission of the Celeste types to try to find superior and superior Celeste out there. There's a huge value in that. And if you talk about preserving varieties, even breeding varieties, uh, my main focus is going to be on the standards and trying to find better versions of that. So if Celeste is a standard, we're gonna to try to find, as I've said, many improved versions of that fig. So thank you guys here so much for, for watching this, this little review that we did. I hope this made some sense. We did ramble on for some time. Um, I wish I had an LSU Tiger that was uh, perfectly ripe to compare side by side. Um, this fig in general in anybody's yard is going to do exceptionally well. I will also mention though, this flavor profile 
um, I have found in many figs. So it's not like the flavor profile is really out there and very different than other varieties. Um, however, it is such a great performer. Um, it does have the most Concord berry flavor than any other fig I've ever tried. So for me, that's a big plus um, and maybe separating it from other figs. But for the most part, you could grow probably LSU Tiger types of Hardy Chicago, and you'd be probably like in Azores Dark, you probably would be okay um, without having this fig. So it's not like I think everybody's got to have it, but if you're a collector, this is seriously one of the best varieties that you can grow. Or even if you're not a collector, you're just starting out and you want to find something that really works out well and also tastes fantastic. This is the fig right here. And this one will do well in any climate. So yeah, thank you guys here so much for watching this, this video. I hope to see everybody soon, all right? Um, take care.